Hello, nice to see you. Um, so yes, as um, Carol explained, we're going to share our experiences of um, taking the Michael. Um, a relatively new, still um, interdisciplinary masters run out of the, cent the interdisciplinary centre for creativity and professional practice. Um, yeah, so so in the thirty minutes, we'll first give a bit of an overview of the Michael. Um, we'll then um, cut seamlessly to some of the theory on interdisciplinarity, and then kind of relate that back to the Michael and our experiences um, on the program, um, with some examples of kind of what the students do, what the staff do, etc. Um, yeah, so some of the uh, so a lot of the stuff we put on slides, stuff that didn't even make it onto the slides, was um, sort of the more pragmatic level about negotiating um, agreements between schools, um, finding appropriate external examiners, um, the fact that we need to offer three different um, possible degree titles to our students, etc. So, you know, if you want to ask about any of that as well, then, then please do when we get to the end. Um, so I thought first to start with just um, a few sort of quotes um, from, well, in this case, from our external examiner. Um, a couple of um, thoughts from the students, the Michael's given me a new perspective on my work, confidence to try different things. These are all things we're very happy to have our students um, say about the programme. And indeed, there's a lot more on the website now. This is, um, could do with updating, perhaps. Um, so what's it all about? Um, well, so it's a master's programme um, with the three, about the three themes of innovation, creativity and leadership that sort of run through the programme across um, all of the modules. Um, it, um, it all started when in 2008 or 9, I um, don't know how many of you were at the university at that time, uh, the then Vice Chancellor um, gave some um, seed funding to um, a small number of interdisciplinary centres. Um, one of the centres that got funding was the Interdisciplinary Centre for Creativity and Professional Practice. Um, I'll put details there in case you're not um, looking at our website every day. Um, and um, the centre set out with three aims. One was to do um, innovative teaching and learning. Um, another was to do uh, research in the area of applied creativity. And the third was to do knowledge transfer. So the MICOR is very much our, you know, what we're doing in terms of um, delivering innovative um, content around innovation, creativity and leadership. Um, so th some pictures of the team. Uh, you see, you see myself and Marianne. There, there, so this is the, one of the initial planning meetings um, for the Masters. Um, the happy team, so Fiona Patterson, who was then in psychology, she's since moved to Cambridge. Um, Barbara Norden, who taught creative writing for us. Roger Neal, who was the then director of the um, centre. Neil Maiden um, in the School of Informatics. Andy Wilkins, who runs consults and he does some visiting lecturing for us. Uh, Marianne. Um, Clive Holson from the Business School and Maura Karen from um, the Psychology Department. So we really came from across the university, um, lots of different schools. That's our um, kind of kick-off meeting at Nesta where we did some thinking about what should be in the programme. Um, that's our big brainstorm activity where we were launching the centre with a big creative problem-solving session. And uh, well, I think that's just the team in, team in another planning meeting. At King's Place. At King's Place, thank you, yes. Um, so, how did the programme turn out? Well, the basics are, we've got eight talk modules, um, 15 credits each, nothing unusual there. Um, there's an individual project worth 60 credits, so half as much again as the talk components. Um, standard numbers of contact hours per module. Assessment is by coursework only. Um, and of course, everything's on Moodle, and we try to view Moodle as kind of the hub for all communications about the programme. Uh, what's a bit less... Um, a bit yeah, more unusual, let's say, is uh, where all the content comes from. So the colour coding is the schools that own the modules. Um, so we've got two modules from the School of Informatics, two from um, School of... Well, actually, it's co coded separately for Arts and Social Sciences. Obviously, they're in one school now, but still separate disciplines. Um, so two um, arts modules, two modules from the Business School, one from the Law School, and one from um, Social Sciences. Um, so, yeah, if you're a full-time student, and perhaps I should say we've just been able to offer the Michael as a full-time programme this year, so we've just got four full-time students this year. Um, it was previously part-time only. Um, this is what the programme looks like for a full-time student. They do four modules in the first semester, four in the second semester, and a good kind of uh, cross-disciplinary selection for each semester. Can you read the module titles? Yeah. 
So we've got technologies, creative writing, creative problem solving, leadership, law, leading creative design, creativity in the creative industries, delivering innovation and psychology. So um, I lead this module, Marianne leads this module. Um, any questions on that before I move on? Um, I also wanted to share just in the introduction the, uh, the programme values, which is also perhaps a little bit unusual, um, being very explicit about the values of a master's programme. Um, we initially put these values together um, sort of based on the content of the programme, um, so the fact that it's a, a master's about creativity and innovation, and, and the values kind of embody uh, the approach that's needed to, I don't know, become a um, successful practitioner in creativity and innovation, but in fact, um, I think they're very appropriate in relation to the interdisciplinary narrative of the programme as well. So I just wanted to share these. Uh, programme values, open-mindedness. Um, yeah, we find, well, with creativity and with interdisciplinarity, it's very important to keep an open mind to, you know, range of different um, perspectives on life and stuff in general. Tolerance of diversity, again, obviously very important in an interdisciplinary master's where students come from a really wide range of um, backgrounds and have really wide range of approaches to um, what they're doing. Um, cooperation, clearly we need to be able to make that work um, across disciplinary boundaries. Risk taking, so this is perhaps one um, more about creativity than interdisciplinarity. But there's also something about you know, signing up to a programme that involves modules from um, sort of five different disciplines. You have to be quite adventurous, I think, to do that in the first place. So we probably get quite an unusual selection of students in the first place. Um, leading and following. So obviously that's the theme of the Masters, Innovation, Creativity and Leadership. And we um, encourage people to understand leadership and followership through practice. Uh, grit, yes. It's hard sometimes, as particularly this is full time, as we'll um, agree, I'm sure. Um, stretching, again, um, important for an interdisciplinary programme. You, you're going to be stretched, you're going to encounter things that are new and seem a bit scary, um, apparent contradictions, and, and need to um, be able to sort of work your way through those. But lastly, just active involvement, just kind of turning up, trusting the process, um, seeing what happens. Um, so that was a really quick sort of run through the mic on what it is. At this point, I'm going to hand over to my colleague. I'll sit in the corner now. I'll, sit, I'll sit in the corner for a bit, yeah. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Kernan. I'm um, very glad to, to have the chance to talk about the mic, which we all spend a lot of time enthusing about. So it's great to have the chance to, to, uh, to spread the word about it. Um, I, I decided for the middle of this, and it will come back to those values, I promise, we'll tie it all together for you, that I'd talk a bit about interdisciplinarity, uh, having mined the literature a bit, but I very much work if other people have other references for me um, to add it to it, because um, it's, it, this is a truly interdisciplinary course. It was designed as such, and we've learned a lot through developing it and, de and delivering it as such. And I found it helpful a couple of years actually for, uh, ago from a previous conference to mine um, what the, the literature can tell us about the nature of interdisciplinary. Um, uh, education in higher education. Of course, the, the starting point is that um, it's, it's unusual. That's a given. But it's unusual for lots of reasons which are absolutely tied into our culture and tied into what Diana just said about the REF. That the way in which people are trained, the way in which they come into academe, the way in which uh, people are valued in the academic world, by definition, uh, are saying that you, you, you have deep knowledge in, in something which is really quite a, a thin slice of life. And, and I think we can all relate to this wonderful quote, outsiders cannot properly practice an intellectual discipline just as foreigners find it difficult to assimilate into a national culture. You, if you are someone who is um, going through a lot of change in your department at the moment, this will absolutely resound with you, and I certainly am. And so we came together as, as fellow explorers willing to embark on a slightly different journey. We're finding this exciting, not a problem, which of course, as you know, the structures of the university then make it very... Um, very difficult to do, so we, have, we can sh talk about the practicalities of it. But there is a, also an issue, less perhaps about discipline, more about culture of what we're there for, as it were, doing to our Michaelers, but also what are we in inducting them into and what are we standing for? 
um, which I think is, is, is very interesting and it's, it's, it's been a big lesson. There's a reason why this doesn't work very often. In fact, Clive Holtham was told, was it Clive? Uh, Clive and, and, and um, uh, it was told, and Andy were told by a man whose book they use all the time in their management modules for the Michael, that it would never work. Great idea, you'll never do it. So here we are, we've done it, and it's a very great success. Um, so why bother? Well, there's some, there are some very interesting quotations in the literature that I found, mainly under the heading of creative industries, because in my, other, my day job at City is I run an MA in publishing studies and an MA in international publishing studies under, under um, arts, the arts and social sciences over there in that world. And so I'm into, I, I, uh, that's what, another of my starting points for pedagogy was about uh, helping equip people to go out into a creative industry. Um, and uh, I have to confess I'm a learning geek, so it's what sort of t gets me out of bed in the mornings. I'm fascinated by, by the things that Diana Loyard's talking about, how to do it really well. So the reason why Hartley, talking about the creative industries, says it matters is that these silos keep, keep people out. There are a way of closure, the way of closing the debate down, the language, the approach, the questions that are acceptable, the questions that can, it just cuts out, you know. Don't give a historian a question that doesn't fit within history. Don't give a physicist a question that doesn't fit. Psychology, really interesting. I used to publish psychology. And the, whole, the rest of the world has a very different view of psychology from psychologists. It's not right or wrong, it's just different. So in his view, in order for, um, for, it, 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 for scholarship, teaching to, to, to prosper, we have to break down these silos to be discussed. There are quite a lot of, um, dis of, of uh, definitional, uh, there's definitional confusion actually, there's quite a lot of definitional confusion about what is interdisciplinarity. So I, I pulled this together, I commend this to you, it's in my references of students' experiences of interdisciplinary master's courses, it's one of the many higher education um, um, academy reports that's online. And it, it has a neat little table which summarizes just these different types of de descriptor for what, what's going on with interdisciplinarity. Um, I actually think we're plurry, to be honest, we're plurry, because we kind of, we do them all, we and then we ask the students to combine them. But there's, there's another one which I think is anti-disciplinarity. There's plenty <laughs> of these. It goes on and on. If you're interested, I, I suggest, I do commend this to you. Um, with the, um, there is a question, interdisciplinarity. Uh, my, my daughter's studying marine biology at Southampton. And they're actually doing modules um, from the, with, with the geologists, the, the geomorphologists, the, the, the chemists, the mathematicians, and the biologists. They're all in together. So that's interdisciplinary teaching. You're not really trying to make the bridges for any of those students. You're just putting them in a classroom together. And then they go back in their later years and try to make sense of it. Interdisciplines, that was more about putting people together to solve a problem, <coughs> use the different lenses. Multidisciplinary is where you're a bit more upfront about it and you really you help work with them. I suppose, she, like, in fairness, is probably what Rosen's doing it. Southampton. Trans is trying to get beyond, and that's when normally you're starting with a problem and then saying, okay, how can academe help us, if at all, to solve this problem? Plurry is, is more specifically bringing it together, and I think, I actually think that we're definitely doing multi interdisciplinary, and I suspect plurry, but we're probably doing anti as well to some degree, so we'll go back to that. So this is again in the literature. I think this is helpful to think about what is going on if you do have a, an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary course that is working for people, what are you actually doing? Well, the, the argument that, that this the report puts forward is that uh, it's valued, these courses are valued, particularly at master's level, because it enables students to deal with complex and real-world issues, not starting from, we're going to look at a biological question, but we're going to look at a, a rich or perhaps even wicked or, or chaotic question. And then you have an area of problem focus. And then we're going to ask you to do various things, not just learn from studies of history and not, not just say, take it in because we say so. We're going to ask you to do things to help you learn. And it's very project-based and that enables you to pull it together. And there are many different ways to do this. And that's, I argue we do it in the publishing MA too. Do it slightly differently with the Michaelers. Um, what does it look like? Again, similar, similar sources. Uh, you can go in and look them up. Um, there's a lot of discovery going on, uh, says the literature, creative problem solving. It's collaborative by definition, practical, problem-based. Um, learning with and from outsiders, really important. It's not, it's, it's people coming in and out of the academy and doing it well. Affective, so it touches us in some way, school-related. Um, I think the touching us is really important, I'll come back to that. Um, 
I'm also very interested as a research area uh, towards my own doctorate, which is at the moment, if I can get some time to do it, it's about the Michael. Um, and it's uh, the, uh, very interested in employability. Employability is very much um, the theme of the, the publishing MA, um, but it's very important here too, um, because the people come in, generally we didn't say, but they come in as post-experience managers, generally. People um, they can't come straight from a first, first degree. They have to have some experience of life and experience of work. And so all of them um, have been touched professionally by this program. But this, this, um, this another online resource, they, they, they pull out, this is pulled out from that. It's uh, summarized ruthlessly. But employability uh, influenced by understanding, obviously, greater understanding that you gain for your, your, teach, your learning skills, which you can transfer into the workplace. I love the efficacy beliefs. I've got another little research project running for myself on that, which I must write up this summer somehow. Self-theories and personal qualities. Those of you who know anything about the efficacy literature will know it's really hard to get, in, get results in this territory. Anything in the self-esteem or the self-efficacy field, really hard to touch. And we're definitely touching it in the Michael. Um, we're definitely touching it in the, in, the, in the publishing course too, but in a different way. Uh, but this is really important, the metacognition. So uh, transferable act, uh, uh, impacts of learning, they're much more about the people and their, the, what they take away than about the knowledge we give them. Are they, are they self-aware? Do they reflect on, in, and for action? So this is, this is this really strong pointers as to what might be going on and what might be the prize here. Um, I put this one in because I run the module called Creativity in the Creative Industries, as well as running my publishing MA. And um, this, is, this is going back to um, Hartley, who wrote, writes about the creative industries. But it, 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 I, I guess I like it because it summarizes, again, the complexity of what, of these, what these people are coming from and going back out to. It's not a straightforward um, set of, of needs or it demands on them. They, 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 most of them are wanting to be more creative in some way or other. Many of them working in creative industries of some kind. They, they might, they, they, then you try to tie that into the fact that what they're dealing with is often on a very large scale. And then, then, then we've got the digital revolution. What's that doing to their work, to the people around them, to their organizations? Never mind the economy, global, by the way. And then, then they've got to understand this, this newly interactive world of, of how it's changing the business environment. Most of these people are in business in some shape or form. Some are in the health service, but you could say this is just as important in the health service, of course. So I, I put it in mainly because of the complexity of where these people are coming from and going to, and that uh, our, our aims are, should do and, and should, I, I would argue, reflect that complexity. Um, so. Again, so what are we doing? How are we treating them? What are we doing with them? Um, what, how should we teach them? Well, instead of you know, talking down to them, if you like, saying this, these are people who, who are coming in because they aren't quite polished, they need us to, to make up for their deficiencies, learning becomes a creative experience driven by the student herself. He's very good on herself languages, language, John Hartley. Um, very right on. And, and this is, this is a, it's a lovely affirmation I think of a lot of what many of us who have committed to teaching feel very strongly about. Um, it's student-centered learning by definition is not the same as, as, to, as knowledge, um, primarily knowledge-centered learning, broadcast learning. It's not what's in my head to you. It's, it's, it's what you can, we, we, how we design it so that people can make best use of it. Uh, and I like this one too, don't forget <laughs> what soft skills they need. Well, they, they need resilience. They're going to go out um, by and large, especially the younger ones, but even on, uh, the ones who's, um, of, oh, I will say it. The first cohort who went through the Michael, something like 75% of them lost or gave up their jobs in the course of the program, of the, of the 14, 15 completers. It's not a very big number, but the similar effect to the second lot. So going, okay, this is having a life-changing <laughs> impact on people. So, you know, we're definitely, uh, in fairness, they've self-selected the program because that's where they were heading. Yeah. You know, you, it, it's not chicken and egg, but no, they didn't always realise that. Didn't always realize that. <laughs> We've definitely got them into this. Um, uh, we, it's very interesting the international reach more, but they, the, the creative workers definitely need to think international. They need to grapple with all these different things. And that this is really, I like this one too, life design. Huge, it keeps coming up with the Michaelers, especially in the work they do for me. Okay. Should Sorry. we? Do you want to kind of stay that because it's a bit hard to intervene from the corner here? Yes. So do, do, should we? <laughs> so we, should we? So this is kind of the, the second part, if you like. Yeah. Um, we've got lots of pictures, um, and um, we just wanted to um, share 
what's happened so far. Um, can I possibly start the next bit by just going around the room very briefly and going, so what, why are you here? What, oh, oh, what, what brought did you, you hope to... Um, that was not working. What did you hope to gain from the session? Can, can I unfairly pick on you to start? Um, you can, and I'm sure my answer's not, not going to be... Just, you know, a um, couple of words. Great. Um, I'm an educational technologist in the School of Arts and Social Sciences. Um, I'm out there today, um, basically, on the Moodle stall. And I hadn't signed up for any sessions because I didn't know how much free time I'd have. Um, so basically, I was able to come to this one, and, and I had a look at it. And because it had the... the most linked really to, to my school to be honest with you so I just thought I'd come along. So you've come with an open mind. Out. Marvellous. Yeah. See you're a Michael exactly. already. I just wanted to learn more about the programme. I work with Marianne a little bit on uh, her publishing masters and I'm just really inspired by the way she teaches. I wanted to learn more about um, the work that you do in this programme. Marvellous. Thank you. Um, Carol, well, I guess we know why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't let me choose. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Another <laughs> request answer. Uh, moving across. Yeah, uh, my name is Kamal Pal and I'm from the School of Informatics. Although I'm in the School of Informatics, I don't know this uh, particular uh, this master's course in details. That's one of the attraction. And the second attraction, I'm here to understand what type of creative skill set this master's course will give our students to go out in the real world and attract a job. Mm. Thank mm. you, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, I'm not from this university, I'm an interloper from another institution. Good to have you. Um, <laughs> and I do some interdisciplinary teaching and force staff to teach interdisciplinary at my institution, so I'm interested to see how other people understand it. Okay, thank you. Um, Great. Marvellous. Talk to me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you realise you'll have a job after? <laughs> 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 you had <laughs> last I, I felt compelled to say it's not compulsory to change your job whilst on the mic. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so, yes, so, some reflections on the mic on how it relates back to the sort of theory about interdisciplinarity and so on. Um, so, and... and yeah, do do chip in if yeah. you disagree with it. So yeah. yeah, I've started with this, and you see, I'm I'm just a I'm just a simple girl from informatics. I don't, I don't know all the theory about the trans pluri disciplinarities. So so yeah, would you like to comment on that? I think that's your bullet, Marianne. <laughs> well, I, uh, only in that uh, there is confusion, as, as people know. In, in practice, I think I don't think the language is the issue. I think it's more. Um, uh, I think it's more the management issues, how, how we can set it up and make it run, and your point about what are we setting them up with out in the world. Um, uh, I, I, I think that by definition, looking at the way we set it up, and we did have long debates, which were very creative, about, about how to do this, about how to run it, so that, you know, would they be separate, would they be connected? Um, we, we, we had to be pragmatic to in, in yeah. setting it up so it was by definition interdisciplinary because we're going to run disciplines for all the different from all the different schools we wanted it to be that for actually for polit political reasons really more than, as much as just content itself but we could see the connections and we were very excited about the connections and then getting them up and running um, of course then people had to get in the classroom and do them and we wanted them as far as possible for them to be real modules running in other schools so we wanted it to be representative mm. of city as well and I think that we achieved that in, in several of the modules, though not in all. Mm. I think we're still exploring, we're actually, still. How, how to cross the disciplinary boundaries That's and right. how, how to make that That's work. Right. And we'll say a bit more in a minute about how that works for the staff and the students. Yeah, so, yeah. Maybe so the only other thing I want to say is yeah. I think that, by definition, these students have pushed us yeah. to, to make those connections better because they are so good at expressing the, the, the uh -huh. connections. Yeah. They, they're finding those connections for us. And it's interesting the difference with the full-timers and the part-timers now, isn't it? So, so the full-timers doing kind of four modules in a semester as opposed to just the two, having a different experience yeah. Um, yeah. from the part-timers. And they're, they're now really able to tell us, oh, actually, hang on, you cover that material over there, but slightly differently, and you know, spot the relationships between the programmes. Yeah. So that's, that's great. I guess the exciting thing is it wor it's worked. I yes. think that's what we're all genuinely excited by. It's yes. worked for them yes. in a way that we actually, to be honest, couldn't have predicted. And they, are, they go straight out of the, the Friday sessions and use it. Yeah, so that's, a, that's the biggest difference from teaching the publishers. I think, and, and sorry, I'm going, Not I'm going a bit off piece here. <laughs> but I think, I think um, interdisciplinarity is especially relevant for creativity in the sense that in creativity, ideas happen at the boundaries. And so the more, almost the more boundaries we can put in, the more effective it is from the mm -hmm. student's point of view in terms of generating new ideas. Mm -hmm. So I think there might be something 
specific about running an interdisciplinary programme around creativity and innovation. And you need the connections, which you come on to. Anyway, <laughs> bullet two, once, yes, so this is just referring specifically back to your slide about the mental silos, breaching and connecting. Um, so here's another thing that really struck a quick, so I, I was kind of reading Marianne's slides yesterday about, about the background, I thought, do you know, that actually is really, really true about our students, they are very vocal, they are very questioning, they are very active learners, um, and they really do pick up on um, the connections between the content in the different modules, which I, I think you were saying just now, actually, weren't you? So yes, they do come, they're, they're quite high-powered people, a bit scarily so sometimes, and they do come with you know, complex real-world problems that they are needing to grapple with. And um, in, as a programme, we do try and give, the skill, give them the skills that they can take away and use straight away. Again, I think you've said, didn't you? I think you've said that as well. But it's really true. <laughs> 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 we can give some examples in a minute that kind of illustrate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and students, so it's kind of interesting, um, following on from um, Diana Laurelard's um, talk about kind of learning with and from each other. I, I do think there's really mm -hmm. a lot of that that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, on the mic. Or so if I could just sure. go back yeah. to why, why we showed the values at the beginning. Yeah. I think an awful lot of its success is about the learning culture mm. and that being willing to take risks from the very beginning and being open to, to yeah. new, new learning experiences. That's really important that how that's set up in induction week and how mm. the, the induction ex activities. And yeah, and, in, and that does play into trusting each other mm. and being happy with learning from each other mm. and appreciating each other's different perspectives and backgrounds and so on and you know being able to take that on board as well I think so. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, reflection, would you like to speak a little bit about reflection? I'd love to, I've got <laughs> reflection all day. What, when we were having a debate as, a, as the design team we were obviously talking about what would this be like and how, we, how will we help the students and the teachers uh, understand the connection and understand something for the teachers, understand something that, of the students' experience going through. And we decided that the, 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 a reflective element in every module would be, would be compulsory without laying down too strict guidelines about how that should be designed or managed. And uh, all, all, almost all of them run through Moodle and almost all of them initially tied to assessment. Whether they all are now, I don't know. But um, it's been very interesting. Mm -hmm. I find that I came into this through, through um, Clive Holtham, who some of you know from the business school, who's quite a character and who runs a lot of reflective, um, it, it, it thrown, throws a lot of reflection at the business students with great success. And that's how he and I came together because I wanted to do the same with the publishers when I arrived. And it's, I think Sarah will, will agree with me, there was some scepticism on the part of some members of the, of the team. I think so. Never, yes, I think people get your head around, so, so what, we've yes. got to get people to reflect. What's us. that? Reflect? Yes. <laughs> Never, yes, what's that? <laughs> so so it, that, that was put in, to be honest, it, it was a kind of tribute to the two of us of faith. Okay, this is going to A, be useful and B, work, um, that it was put in. But even within the first run of the, the program, people who hadn't used it before as teachers were realising what a huge benefit it was because they were also getting that immediate feedback on the programme, the experience, the usefulness. And it has, it's been one of those cycles that Diana had on her, mm -hmm. her animations completely. And it, the, the, it, we've also become better at setting it up because um, Sarah's found a textbook and we've given them more of a process. We've, we've, between us as a team, found better models for it in terms of theory and ways of uh, assessing it um, across the piece. Uh, the students do say that what reflection means looks different in different modules. So whether we'll continue to develop that or whether that's just okay mm -hmm. because that's part of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. working with different disciplines, not too hung up on. Um, but it's certainly, um, the, the probably it should have said I run my modules at the very end. I get them for the grand finale. And they do a very big creative reflective piece in that. And you can, they, I encourage them to reflect on the whole programme. So it pulls the whole thing together in the context of having themselves uh, made art and performed a piece together. So they've been pushed, none of whom are performers, they've been pushed into, into creative practices which are in their final module. And so it really is a grand finale. So this is a very powerful piece of reflection in general. And I was pleased last year that several of them decided to use that as a framework for their dissertations, mm -hmm. their final mm -hmm. projects. Mm. Let's push on um, to some pictures. So yes, just to give you a kind of feel for what learning on the micro is like, this is uh, the first module, um, it's the first cohort in the first module, so this is creative problem solving and leadership. Um, yeah. He's not conducting. <laughs> he's, 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 he's just getting excited. Yes, he's excited. Yes. <laughs> we do a lot of that. Um, yeah, more kind of discussion, flip charts, post-its, food, etc. Um, 
Yeah, and, and so here, I guess this is the last uh, two kind of points we wanted to get across. So how we make it work between staff and how we make it work for the students. So um, thinking, and it would be interesting if you would share some of your approaches with um, staff. So some of the things that we do to help staff um, understand, appreciate each other's disciplinary perspective include, so we instituted this um, thing called shadowing, whereby each year, each module leader needs to shadow another module, and that changes each year. Um, and what that means is um, the shadower um, second sets coursework, so takes a look at coursework before it's um, given to students as a, as a kind of sanity check for someone outside the discipline. Um, so sorry, shadows, shadowing always happens across disciplines. Um, so second set the coursework, and then sit in on some of the module so that you really get a feel for you know, how teaching's happening what content's being covered, whether it's the same, some of the same content as you're covering in your own module, only in a different way, etc. So, so we have this kind of pairing scheme, rolling pairing scheme, and so the aspiration is that you know, within a few years we'll all have shadowed all of the other modules, maybe. <laughs> um, double marking and marking moderation, did you want to say something about that? The, um, uh, the, yes, the, uh, we have a form, as everyone has, but because uh, we are multidisciplinary or across the dis different disciplines, um, we, we do have to make sure that our moderation processes are robust enough that somebody who's not a specialist can can moderate it. And, and so when we do it, we do it across the team. Um, the double marking, um, by and large, is for people, live projects in the room, where you have to have two markers in the room. It's been so illuminating mm. to, well, and challenging. It's, it's extended my own understanding my, of, in, in, in my own, in my own as it happens, interdisciplinary program about how to set up and, and moderate some of that marking. So it definitely feeds back into our other practice. But it, I think that's a very important formal part of it. We have to answer for it to the external. Yeah. So then we've come together at the exam board and we've had, if he's had queries about the marks, it, we've both had to sit and talk them through. We have to, and then also the dissertation marking similarly has had a, a, a helped us to pull together and better understand across the different disciplines how these standards apply, what they look like, and that's been a very creative debate. Mm. Essential. Mm. And actually, it has pulled, it, that's where the disciplinarity has probably reared its head most awkwardly, is, is in the marking of the final dissertations, I've, in my experience. Mm, 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 definitely, yeah. Mm. Um, and planning meetings, it sounds really boring, planning meetings, doesn't it? We had a lot of meetings, as you saw in the, um, one of the first uh, photos, we had a lot of uh, meetings before the programme to kind of think about what it should be, how it should work, etc. Um, we've had one a year for the last couple of years. I really would like to have more, but it's really hard to get everyone together same time and same place. Um, so, you know, I keep aspiring to having more planning meetings per year, but I, I don't know whether we'll manage it. What we do, um, we just kind of sit down as a teaching team, and I really enjoy coming together with a micro teaching team. I don't I hope everyone does. Um, and we just uh, literally talk about how each module is going, the connections between the modules, the kind of themes that run through the module. So at last year's planning meeting, I remember Clive introducing the idea, well, we've got the golden thread of creativity running across the modules. We've got the silver thread of innovation. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on, but you can, you know, you see. You can hear it. <laughs> He's in the rooms near, really. Yes, yes. So, yeah, there are, you know, these are good. These are creative. These, these are meetings where we do innovation in teaching um, mm. across mm. the team. And, you know, that's one of the kind of ways in which we make... Uh, and it's remarkable team. that we have stuck with it, because it, when there's so much change going on, uh -huh. and, you know, the Fiona now at Cambridge, and the, the, so many pressures on us, and to be honest, within our schools, the, pr the time given to the micro is, is, has to be kept very quiet very often because it's, it's, it's something we're choosing to do, um, though it's often in some of our contracts. But it's, it, it, the time that we've given to this is over and above because it, it's, uh, all of us have been very committed to it. It's been genuinely so mm. interesting. And in my case, I turned down another job to stay. Thank you. Partly because of the micro. <laughs> Ten minutes from my front door. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Doubly. <laughs> But whether um, we'll be able to keep it, the, the, the next challenge might well be a change of core team. You know, yeah, what's yeah, going to yeah, happen yeah, to the programme in the future? Yeah, we have to understand how we can, how the team yeah. can We've been very mutate, lucky. migrate, etc. yes. Um, so that was the staff point of view. Students want to say something about. Um, so how do we help students on the Michael um, cross the disciplinary boundary, boundaries? Um, and I've got, I've got pictures to illustrate all of these in a second, so I'll just kind of talk through what kind of thing we mean. So lived experience workshops each semester. Um, so we have at least one uh, lived experience workshop each semester, which means we get as many of the micro students as we can together in the same room to just literally share 
their experience of um, being on the Michael program. Now, um, these started off as kind of, you know, people came up and did, gave their um, sort of little five minute presentations, maybe just sat down and sort of told us what they, how they were doing. Um, the latest one was quite extraordinary. <laughs> so, so this is with the most recent cohort of students where we've really been encouraging um, reflection and giving students the tools to do lots of reflection. And um, I was completely blown away, actually, by <laughs> some of so the... One, one we had to do a role play at one point. A dance almost. <laughs> yes. All of us. Um, yeah, just, just sort of sharing the, I don't know, extraordinary journeys that mm. some of them um, have been going through while um, being a student on the Michael. Um, so, I, and I think it's really, it's part of the culture, I guess, of the programme, that we come together in a OK with sort of sharing um, the experience of the programme with each other. So it's not just the students that share their experience, the, the staff share their experience as well. Um, yeah, so that I think that is quite an important part of the culture of the programme as a whole. Uh, module circle X, I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Uh, like, do you want to speak about these, Mary, on the last three? Well, well um, oh wow. Or is it easier Get done? Started. It's, How long it's have we got? perhaps easier oh, done yes. through. Yeah, so you haven't got that long now. But um, the, I've the, got a couple the, of pictures of these. Yes, okay. The, um, the, the, the topping and tailing of the programme, uh, the creative writing module. Where, which every, every time they talk about the, the programme, the Michael say is really important because you have to write, your, write stories and read them aloud to your peers and get feedback on them. And that takes people through a lot of confidence and trust, but also creative barriers. And my, in my module, as I say, the assessments are a group live performance and a, an art show. I kid you not, which is the most extraordinary, uh, both are just quite extraordinary. And we set them up by, by the various workshops and lots of support and so on, but they, that's what they're marked on with a reflective portfolio and sketchbook. And I, I have a couple of them here, um, which, uh, which, in which they are encouraged to reflect on their journey across the programme as a whole. And so um, in other modules, there would be less live performances, more live project that they did a wonderful project for Neil with, with the Boris bikes, or the Barclay bikes, as to how that could be improved as a system in, in this term as well. So it's not just that, but the, uh, it, as you can hear, it is stretching. It's stretching assessment processes for sure, and assessing, uh, stretching what would be asked of students in general, um, except it, in, in fairness, in the business school. This, this module that I lead has really come out of the business school, much more than it's ironic, you know, the musicians wouldn't do a module like this even though they're in the music department. Um, not yet. I'm told that they might look at creative processes with, with composition. They had a pathway when I challenged them on this the other day. This is certainly richer and more um, reflective than, than anything I've... Uh, in fact, in fairness, anything Clive's seen in the business school, what we get, what they produce. Mm. OK. Um, so some examples then. Here, so here's a lived experience. So this is the first cohort. You see, it's all, it's all very orderly. We were sitting around a table um, listening to the presentations. This is the lovely Simon sharing his lived experience as a Michael. Um, in his case, it was um, he'd come on the programme feeling a bit frustrated that he was having um, lots of great ideas and not being able to get them across. And here he's, sha he's sharing the moment when, do you know, I made a presentation and people listened and they got my ideas and it was fantastic. And he subsequently achieved um, promotion in his organisation. Very happy. Marvellous. Um, this is... That's me being the glamorous assistant holding up the students' work. <laughs> this is um, students making sense of uh, the idea of leadership as it um, relates to three of the modules, creative writing, um, creative problem solving and leadership, and the psychology module. So just kind of talking through, working through the connections between um, some of the modules in, relation, in relation to one of the key themes of the programmes of leadership. Um, and this is, this is actually Clive's. Um, so this is a module circle exercise. Um, so what we give students is the circle um, with each of the modules around the edge. And we can, you can do different things with the circle. Um, this time, I think this time, we just kind of gave out the sheet and went, tell us what you think about the connections between the modules. And um, so Clive has identified intellectual links inside. He's identified personal benefits of the different um, modules and organisational benefits, colour-coded in pink. So, so, you know, students and staff produce these um, representations of the connections they see between the modules on the programme. And then, you know, sometimes we have a sort of facilitated discussion. So this is one of the modules leading creative design. <coughs> and you can see all the connections that were coming up in discussion um, with, between that module and other modules. Um, these, this is one of the artefacts from this year's show. Um, 
I forgot to bring the explanation with me, but um, so this was um, from a student who was ex exploring the idea of breakthrough. She called her piece Breakthrough, and it was about the experience of trying and failing and eventually breaking through in terms of you know, having new ideas, innovating, etc. And she wonderful, she made a wonderful little video about the making up the yeah. piece. And she presented it very much as though in an art display. Yeah. That was one of the, they could choose the context. It didn't have to be an art gallery, but she chose to do this. This is a, a piece about this big of, of, of canvas. And she, 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 she did plaster cast moulds of, her, of herself That's and the stuck them on. Her face stuck the them on. Uh, very powerful, but quite light, surprisingly light, and quite fragile as a piece. But the whole thing was very affecting. Um, and, and she gave this wonderful little, as it were, you know, appropriate little blurb. And yeah. yeah. And another one that I particularly related to was, um, was this one from another student uh, who's one of the full-timers who's just um, finished this year. Okay, a little so bit hard to see. It's, it was about this big, and it was a, it it displayed actually, at this yes. sort of height, and it had a mirror at this end and a sort of viewpoint. And this is a, 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 a character, a, 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 a black and across. white, two facing character to, to this is the white head facing that way so it, it depending on which side you looked at it from you saw the black the black behind it was called fear yeah black behind or and, and lots of words so these are all the things that hold you yes. back yes and this is so there's a big drop down here and you you know the idea is that you're afraid of going for yeah, yeah. you're afraid yeah. of going forward um, and all these all your past associations hold you back but there was a a golden thing on this side if i remember correctly anyway so and it was yeah, towards another, the light it was towards the windows so another reflection on Progress. That was an artifact in yeah. life. Yes. Um, oh, and that's it. References, um, and I'll, I'll leave that um, up. As do get in touch. I'm sure we'd both love to hear from you if you want to know more. Um, and yeah, sorry. So I, I, we didn't say this bit at the beginning, did we? So I'm the course director for the um, for the Michael and uh, Marianne's um, head of Centre for Creative Writing, um, and we're both module leaders on the Michael. Um, so yeah, do feel free to get in touch afterwards if there's anything you'd like to talk about. People interested in those references, where would they find them? I don't know what we're doing with our slides. Are we are we sharing them somewhere via slideshow? Um, I think there is the idea that they'll be going up on the RGC website. Okay. Um, after the sort of cool. Process, but yeah, so That's what I hoped. Yeah. All right then. Lovely. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm not sure we answered your question about the creative techniques and how they're being applied. But so just quickly to say, um, N Neil and and uh, Sarah teach all the, the creative design and problem solving techniques that you would you would teach in informatics and you add to that some of the innovation and creativity techniques in business that that Andy Wilkins shares with from the two for the two CAS based modules and then um, add to that the sort of personal experience of creativity and, and really personal resistances if you like breaking through the personal resistance to creativity and that I think it's it is that combination mm. that enables that gives them the confidence and the personal experience of their own creative juices and processes. Mm. And the creative that, writing module, and the creative, that uh, Absolutely, that opens yeah. that space. And so I think, I, do, I think that it is that combination of e experiencing those themes as well as exploring them intellectually um, and then applying them in so many different ways that enables them to take them out in the world, if that makes answer to your question. Can I hand these oh. around for people to have a look at? If, um, just, uh, could I just I'll, I mean, ask, I'll get around to the question, I think, if I may. Um, one of the things I think is interesting, and it doesn't surprise me in my own experience of similar issues, is I think one of the things that you do, why, why people leave jobs or change, is that I think what we're doing is undermining their identities, that, that actually you know, a lot of interdisciplinary work can question the authority over knowledge in a particular area in which we're comfortable with it, and starts to question whether actually we have authority over that knowledge, because it breaks down some range of emotions, I'm sure, um, for some, you know, for, for most of us we quite like being identified as a something, because then other people can't question it. Um, mm. I'm an educationist, or I'm a political scientist, and therefore you can't say it. And when you start to broaden out that, I think that threatens people. Do you mean as teachers or as students? Both yeah, because then it, it was most of these are managers, so I agree as teachers, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, the authority thing, right. they, they, and they question the authority that they're working under at work. And I think too. You, as, you as teachers, I, I, I don't know how you, I don't know you uh, but I think you, know, you, have, you have to be of a certain willingness to accept the trust of others to be able to open yourself up to say, I'm not necessarily the expert. Um, 
Definitely, that, and that's that's sorry. I need to say something <laughs> just because on every so we have such a wide range of people um, on the program from all sorts of disciplinary backgrounds. So for every module, there's quite likely someone in the room who knows at least as much as the module leader, if not more. So I teach the technologies module, and I've had people in the class who run their own Unix business, for example. And yeah, so so I, I find the only response to that is to is to be able to go. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know everything. Um, please share if you find you know more than me. And 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 to let students learn from each other as well. Um, and on the understanding that, you know, in the next module, creative writing, say, that same person who was, you know, so knowledgeable in that module might feel rather insecure. So I think that's, again, comes back to the programme values of kind of cooperation and um, mutual support and so on. So, sorry, I interrupted. No, 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 no,
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, just what they signed up for. Yeah, they want to pass the modules. When we put together this proposal, and it was reviewed by somebody for this conference, we had the question back about could it be done at undergraduate level, and I was reminded of it by what you say because I I think actually the biggest issues would be organisational. It's not the students so much as, as the people who'd be delivering to them and, and being willing to, to, to... How do you deal with the why question when you've got 60, 60 youngsters, 18-year-olds in the room? That's, that's a, again, thinking of my daughter's marine biology course. It's within a particular context. Uh, but we, we do have courses that effectively do that. Creative and cultural industries is, is, is having to do some of that. But I think they do generally meld back into a disciplinary home. So that one's melding back into sociology from my perspective. Um, very interesting. I have a simple question. Uh, I think we are running this course for the last two, three years. Mm. Yes. So do you know where our uh, successful students are working now? Well, so we've d because we only ran it part-time uh, when we started off, our first cohort of students just graduated in January. Mm. Um, and as, as we've been saying, a lot of them kind of changed course during um, during the course, so if I try, if I sort of run through in my head um, where some of the first cohort have ended up, you've mentioned that um, quite a lot of them did change path. Um, there's a there's a significant, I don't know if it's a majority or a minority really. So, so the, there's a, there's a good bunch of them that end up being kind of creative facilitators or consultants in some form. Um, I can think of four off the top of my head. I think. Um, Others um, have stayed in, in the within the same organisation and are you know, perhaps just doing the work slightly differently or moved to a different post or achieved promotion, as in um, Simon's case. Um, so you know, really, they come from a really wide range of backgrounds and they go off to a really wide range of things afterwards, so there's no kind of one easy answer a micro student will then become, hmm. although th there does seem to be a little bit of a pattern towards people moving into sort of creative facilitation, um, innovation, consultancy and so on, yeah. The reason I was asking is that my intention was to find out whether these uh, previous students are going to a, or heading towards a particular industry or a particular type of job. Mm. Not really, so no. And no. map Not the really. outcome no. with a particular mm. uh, type of skill set. It's not that neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see it's four o'clock and you've probably... I think we need to wait to a close, <laughs> otherwise we don't get meetings. It's really important, unless they want to find it. I think it's just uh, leaves me to uh, ask you to join me in thanking these two mm -hmm. presenters for a really fascinating session. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.